Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry channel. It is now time to start a new chapter. So this is the first video of the chapter, the solid state. We have already studied states of matter and in states of matter for class 11, we did the solids as uh, the liquid state and the gaseous state in details, but we left out the solid state. So now in this video, we are going to deal with the solid state. But before we come to the solid state, let me just revise a little bit of what decides with the state of a substance. There are two main things or rather two main factors that decide whether a substance would be a solid, a liquid or a gas. We know solids are substances which are dense, which are hard. Liquids are flowy, fluidy substances and gases of course are present everywhere and we can't we may be able to see some colorful ones if they are trapped in a, uh, in a glass jar. Otherwise, gases are present all over and we don't even see them because their molecules are so far apart. So what is it that decides the, uh, the physical state of a substance? The three physical states, that are, the two factors that decide it are intermolecular forces, that is forces of attraction. We are ignoring the forces of repulsion here, mainly the forces of attraction and thermal energy. It is these two factors that decide the physical state of a substance. A solid is the most dense state. The liquid is slightly fluid. In a solid, the molecules are tightly packed. They are holding on to each other. They cannot move. They just can vibrate about their own position. In liquids, the molecules are slightly more loose. They are not attracted so strongly. So intermolecular forces in solids are the highest and intermolecular forces in liquids are medium and gases the molecules are far apart therefore the intermolecular forces of attraction are the least in gases so we say how do how do intermolecular forces decide the physical state the strongest intermolecular forces are in the solid state the weaker are in the liquid and the weakest are the gaseous state similarly thermal energy also decides the physical state Thermal energy is the movement of these molecules. In the solid state, the molecules are tightly bound and they are rigid because the molecules cannot move from their position. If, if you are, imagine yourself in a crowded bus or in a crowded place and there are people all around you, you cannot actually move from one place to the other. All you can do is perhaps oscillate, vibrate a little at your own position, but you can't really pass through because there is no space to let you go. So in the case of solids, the molecules, they are bound to the neighbors and they are rigidly wrapped around by all other neighbors, neighboring molecules, and therefore, they cannot move their thermal energy. What is thermal energy? Energy due to which they have kinetic energy, due to which they can move. Since the thermal energy is low, they cannot really move. So thermal energy in the solid state is the least and in the gaseous state, the molecules are free to move about wherever they want. They can go because they have the maximum thermal energy and liquids are of course the medium. They are between the two. Their thermal energy falls between the solids and the gaseous state. So it is these two uh, energies or rather these two factors that mainly decide the physical state of a substance. Let us now come to the solid state. The solid state and what are the characteristics of a solid? I just took these two rocks from the front lawn and we see that one of the rocks is slightly smaller. They have a specific shape. And this rock appears to be a little bigger. So the volume that this one is occupying is less and the volume that this one is occupying is more. And if I clash them together, they make a sound, you know. Do you see this? Because they are so hard, they are rigid. Rigidity or hardness. The surface, they have a proper surface and it's really hard. If I took a liquid instead, the surface is not fixed and the molecules can easily move. You can see the liquid, it acquires the shape of the container. It does not have a fixed shape either. So solids, what are the characteristics of solids? First, they have a definite mass, they have a definite volume, and they have specific shapes. They have definite shapes. Liquids, 
do have a specific mass, they have a specific volume, but they do not have a specific shape. And gases, they have a specific mass, anything that is matter has mass, but they do not have a specific volume or a definite shape. The second characteristic of solids is that they have short intermolecular distances. If intermolecular distances are less, that is the reason why they cannot bodily move from one place to the other. They are closely, the molecules are tightly packed together and that's the reason why they are so rigid, they are so hard. So they have short intermolecular distances and strong intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces of attraction and that is why the molecules, they are so, they are fixed at their positions. The next property or characteristic of the solid state is that the constituent particles, they only oscillate. They have strong intermolecular forces and the constituent, constituent particles can only oscillate about their mean position. You can imagine that the constituent particles, how would they move when they are present, when they have uh, the neighboring molecules are literally uh, touching them on all sides. It's not possible for the molecule to bodily move from one place to the other. And the last property is that they are incompressible and they are rigid. Rigid, of course, I told you. Incompressible means if you really look, if you take gas and um, in a jar and you put a piston and you push the piston down like you can imagine a syringe. When you push the piston of the syringe, the air present inside the uh, syringe, it gets compressed. So gases can be compressed. But liquids and solids, their molecules, they are literally touching each other. So it is not possible to compress them. So you cannot compress uh, solids and you cannot compress liquids. So they are incompressible and they are rigid. So these were the characteristic properties of, uh, of solids. Let us now come to two classifications or rather two main categories of solids. Solids are categorized into crystalline solids and amorphous solids. So let us understand what these crystalline solids and amorphous solids are. Crystalline solids, you know, I, I would like, I'm sure all the girls would be interested, all your gemstones, diamonds and all the other amethyst and all kinds of gemstones that give, they are all crystalline in nature. They are beautiful crystals that as ionic compounds are usually crystalline in nature. Even sodium chloride crystals you would find uh, cupric chloride, you have all kinds of crystals. Uh, a few years ago, I had gone to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. I'll insert a few pictures of those crystals to show you uh, the crystalline nature and how they, what are the characteristics as we will study. You could see, you could just pause those pictures and see those uh, crystals. So we have two different kinds, that is crystalline and amorphous. Amorphous solids are those which do not have a definite shape. They are more like vague, uh, like coal, pieces of coal. Each piece is coal, but each piece has a different shape. It has, it, there is no organization there. So the two kinds of solids are crystalline solids, which are kind of organized, and amorphous so solids, which do not believe in many rules. And therefore they are a little irregular. So let us see what are the differences between crystalline solids and amorphous solids. I've listed down these properties of, uh, on the basis of which we differentiate them. The property is shape. Crystalline solids, as I told you, they are the organized ones. In these, the molecules are organized in definite patterns and therefore the solid itself has a very specific structure. If you uh, are aware that diamonds, uh, if you go to a uh, gemologist or somebody who knows about gemstones, he would easily be, he'd just take a lens and he'd be able to tell you whether the stone that you gave him is a pure uh, diamond, is it a pure crystal or not. Why? Because the crystals should have a definite structure and only if the structure is that specific definite structure is your crystal pure. If not, it means there is either some impurity in it or it is a synthetically prepared substance. So we have uh, the shape, they have a definite crystalline substances have a definite characteristic shape. 
and amorphous solids on the other hand they do not have a definite shape they are irregular in their shape every substance each one of them may be the same but each one has a different shape now examples are these rocks maybe igneous or this looks like marble they may all be uh, they may all be marble but each one is ha has a different shape and um, although these have been worn out by some they must have been on some ocean bed I think because they seem to be um, they seem to have very smooth surfaces so crystalline solids have a definite geometrical shape while amorphous solids they are irregular the next property is the melting point now crystalline solids since they have a very definite structure and a very definite pattern they have a sharp melting point as soon a sharp melting point means that as you start heating them the temperature starts rising and at a particular temperature exactly you will see all of it starting to melt it will kind of crumble down so it has a sharp melting point at that temperature you find the state changes but in the case of amorphous solids amorphous solids since they are disorganized they do not have that organized molecular structure the amount of heat they absorbed and how it affects also is different in different parts of the uh, of the solid therefore they when they start melting they do so over a range of temperature they do not have a sharp melting point a specific melting point they melt over a range of temperature and they are usually known as pseudo solids we call them pseudo pseudo means something that's uh, that's not real uh, you've heard about pseudopodia imaginary pseudo is uh, not real or false to be more precise so pseudo solids are solids which are false solids they should have been liquids but they were a little too dense and that's why we call them solids while actually they were liquids for example you have glass glass is actually a liquid do you know and or you could call it an amorphous solid it's a pseudo solid a glass is known as a pseudo solid because if you uh, look at buildings uh, which are very old and which have glass panes or window panes that are really really old the bottom of the window pane it becomes thicker why because the glass uh, window was actually a liquid and since it is such a dense liquid it does not immediately flow down it takes years and years hundreds of years to really come down and make the bottom thicker and the top becomes thinner if you look at a very old mirror and look at yourself in it the image looks a little distorted because and that is because of the same reason that the image the mirror was a plain surface but over the years glass being a liquid it flows down ever so slightly and ever so slowly you do not even notice it but but after many years when you see your image it appears to be distorted because it has flown down so amorphous solids are called pseudo solids and they are actually or we, we could say that they are liquids which are um, either super cooled or they've been condensed or they are so uh, condensed that they behave as solids and therefore they do not have a definite melting point they melt over a range of temperature the next is cleavage property do you know if you take a hammer and you smash a, di a piece of diamond and please don't do it if you try that your mom's going to kill you if it's her diamond <laughs> so take a take a piece of diamond and you smash it with a hammer so if you smash it you'll notice it first of all it's a very hard substance it may not be easily smashed but if you really use force you can fracture it you can smash it and when you notice the uh, the pieces and you see them under a lens you will observe that those little pieces also have the same shape because crystals the crystals they have definite cleavage surfaces they can only cut at certain surfaces you can't just cut them anywhere so even if you're smashing it it is going to the smaller pieces are also going to be in the same shape so we say the cleavage property or when you take a knife and you cut a, a crystalline substance with a sharp knife it will have a definite sharp surface and a shiny surface usually so 
you must have noticed your teacher cutting sodium uh, in the laboratory and she uses a knife to do that and the when she cuts the fresh sodium piece and you notice it has a shiny surface that is what crystalline substances are like so when you cut it forms plain surfaces specific surfaces the smaller pieces also actually are uh, mini versions of the larger crystal in the case of amorphous solids on the other hand when you cut it with a sharp knife they they form irregular pieces and you smash a piece of coal uh, it just gets shattered into more pieces of coal all of different sizes different shapes and different uh, nothing really matches because they do not have an order in the molecules so if there is no order specific order in the molecules itself how do you expect there to be order in the structure the next is the heat of fusion now Crystalline solids have a definite or characteristic heat of fusion. You know, the amount of heat that is required to convert one mole of a, a substance, to change the state of one mole of a substance, is known as its heat of, from, from the solid state to the liquid state, is known as its heat of fusion. So how many, uh, how much of, how many kilojoules of energy would be required to convert the state at a particular temperature, uh, that is known as the heat of fusion the heat of fusion for crystalline solids can be measured it is a measurable quantity it's a specific quantity but since amorphous solids themselves do not have a specific melting point also the heat of fusion also is not specific you cannot measure it it usually uh, melts over a range of temperature so they do not have you cannot measure that definite heat of fusion in the case of amorphous solids the next point of difference is the order in arrangement. If you take a crystalline solid, now look at this structure. I've made this as a crystalline solid and that's an amorphous solid, these two structures. If you look at the order, in, if you look at this, you find all the circles, they consist of uh, 12 atoms. All, all the cyclic structures have 12 atoms in them. But if you look at an amorphous solid, this has 12, this has every circle has a different number of uh, atoms making the circle so each unit is kind of different and there might be a repetition of another unit having 12 uh, atoms in it but that is uh, that is not right it is you do not see a pattern over a certain range in the case of crystalline solids there is a certain pattern which is maintained and it is meant that pattern of order is maintained over a long range throughout the crystal the same pattern of molecules or atoms constituent particles is repeated but in the case of amorphous solids such a pattern may exist for a short range but not for the long range so we say amorphous solids have short range order while crystalline solids have long range order then comes the next property that is isotropy Crystalline solids are said to be anisotropic in nature and amorphous solids are, isotrop uh, are isotropic in nature. Isotropy means having, um, if you start measuring a particular property in a certain direction, for example, refractive index or um, the thermal conductivity, you are trying to find out the, these properties, measure it for, for the solid substance. In the case of crystalline substances, we find that along different directions, these properties they differ they are not the same the refractive index in one direction will be different but in the other direction it is different but in the case of uh, amorphous solids they seem to have the same property throughout they are uh, they seem to have an even property if you are throwing light over it or if you are, if it is conducting heat it is doing so evenly throughout the uh, solid what is the reason for this the reason can again be explained in the structure as I told you that in crystalline solids, the structure, the atoms or the constituent particles are arranged in a certain pattern. And since they are arranged in a certain pattern, when they, when they start conducting, let us say thermal conductivity or whatever they are doing, let us say we are measuring the property along different directions. I start providing heat along this direction. If I provide heat along this direction, the heat is traveling in this direction. So. What do I have along the path of the heat? I have one blue dot, red, blue, red, blue, red. Imagining them to be uh, two different atoms of different elements. 
But if I had provided heat here, then I would have got in this direction only the red dots and the properties of atoms of every element are different. So the conductivity, the thermal conductivity or the refractive index in this direction would be different and in this direction would be different. And if I had passed it through here, there would be only blue dots. Again, the property would be different. So in the case of crystalline solids where there is a definite pattern, the definite pattern may not be the same in every direction. In every direction due to that definite pattern, you have a difference in the pattern along every line in different directions. Therefore, we say that the properties are the crystalline solids, they are anisotropic. Iso, iso means same. Tropic is properties. They do not show the same properties in all directions. But in amorphous solids, now this is random. If I try to pass, in the case of an amorphous solid, if I try to pass, uh, there is heat in one direction. Here I'm doing it, I got one red, I got one black. And if I did it in this direction, I again got somewhat similar. So since there is no pattern, it may appear that whichever direction you go, on the whole, randomly, you may get the same number of constituents of both the types and in kind of the similar mixture. So although the structure of crystalline solids is very, very specific, but if you have to measure their properties, then crystalline solids are anisotropic, while amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. That was about isotropy. And then are a few examples of uh, Crystalline solids would be diamond, gemstones, the different uh, ionic salts, they are all crystalline in nature. Amorphous solids, examples of these would be glass, rubber, plastics, coal, uh, they are all examples of amorphous solids. So with this, I'll finish the first video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.